In today's tutorial, we're going to make a very easy granny square dishcloth. This is for beginners and beyond. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on a Bernat Handy Crafter or Sugar Lily and Cream dishcloth. It's the cotton yarns made by Yarnspirations. You're only going to need one ball in order to do this. Now you'll notice that the ball that they've used in the example is variegated but today we're going to use a solid color. That's completely up to you. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to work on this pattern. You can use a six millimeter crochet hook or a size J but in today's tutorial I'm going to reduce down even further to a five millimeter size H and that's just because it's a preference for me. So as long as the hook complements the yarn you cannot go wrong at any time. So without further ado let's get started on working on this pattern together. So let's quickly review why you would use Sugar Lily and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter and that's because it's cotton yarn. So cotton yarn is designed for the kitchen. It is made 100% of cotton. It is grown in the United States as well as uh, spun and dyed here in North America. So this is a, a yarn that you can use in the kitchen. You can use it for scrubbing dishes. You can use these as tea towels. You can do these as uh, coasters. You can also use these as um, pot holders and there's a lot more other applications that you can use for these because it is cotton it is machine washable and uh, the colors really do hold out on these things because they are made of cotton and they look really quite nice and vibrant. So if you're in the store shelves just look for Sugar Lily and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter and you cannot go wrong if you're looking for cotton yarn. So let's create a slip knot. This is for beginners so I will take my time. Point your finger like this and wrap the yarn around your finger twice. Okay so that the start in the yarn is in the forward of your hand and then just grab everything so it's nice and tight here. I want you to move this string over. Just put it over top but not over top of your finger. Just over top of the first one. Then take the second one and just go up and over top of your finger just like that. Let me show you one more time. So wrap the finger, squeeze. Take the back one, move it up over the forward and then take the new back one and up and over. I want you to insert your crochet hook. Now the reason why I reduced my hook today is that you can get tighter stitches when you reduce the hook. So I reduced it down to five millimeter instead of a six millimeter. Without further ado let's get started now on the pattern. Let's begin by working on a chain. We're gonna yarn over and do four chains. So just yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, three, and four. And we need to form the center ring of the dishcloth so we're gonna insert the hook into the beginning chain like so. Yarn over and pull through like this and now you have the very center of the ring of your dishcloth. Let's move along to row number one. Okay we're gonna start by doing the first revolution around the center ring. We're going to start by chaining five. So you yarn over and pull through. So one, two, three. Okay so of five the three counts as a double crochet so then four and five. Okay so I, you'll see why I've done that in just a sec why I've set it that way. So now what I want you to do is that I want you to yarn over and put in three double crochets into the center ring itself. So yarn over going into the center of the ring and making sure that this string here is round the round the ring. This is your starting string so it'll get stuck underneath. Pull through, pull through two and two. So do that again. So yarn over, middle, pull through, pull through two and two. Yarn over, going in the middle, pull through, pull through two and two. So in the corners of these particular squares you're always gonna do the same thing. You're always going to put in um, some chain work. So we're gonna put two chains, so one and two and coming back into the center of the ring I want you to put three more double crochets. So one, and you're gonna naturally rotate the product project on itself as you're going around this ring. So now you got three in here. So there's another side. You can see it kinda coming together. Chain two which is a corner and then coming back into the center of the ring I want you to double crochet three times. So one, two and three. Okay, chain two because it's a corner. And now that we're coming all the way around we can see that we have three sides. We have a partial of a beginning of a fourth but it's not done. So when we come into the center of the ring again we're only gonna double crochet two times this time instead of three. So one and two and the reason for that is that the chaining of five, three of them are, par are, are a double crochet and the, uh, the extra two are 
the chain two. So in the third chain up just count it, just insert into the chain, not around the gap space itself, into the chain, pull through and through. And so you can see all four sides of your granny square are now down. Let's move along to the next round. So let's move along to the next round. We want to slip stitch into this beginning round. So we're just gonna go right into the, into the hole, yarn over, pull through and through. And now that takes you right to the side corner as you can see. And now I want you to chain five again. So one, two, three, which is a double crochet, then four and five, which is your chain two. Coming to the same space, I want you to double crochet three times. Right into that same space, we're gonna create a brand new corner. So the only difference is you're getting bigger on these granny squares is that there's gonna be more distance in between the corners. So when we are in between, all we just need to do is that we have to chain one and come into a next space over here which happens to be a corner. So all the corners are gonna be the same. There's gonna be three double crochets. So let's do that slowly. So one, two, and three. And now that we've done that, we're gonna turn the corner. So you have to chain two and come back into the same space and put in three more double crochets. Just like this. So every time you're in the midway point, not a corner, you're always gonna chain one before jumping to the next space. In this case, we just happen to have another corner. So the corner thing is gonna happen again. So three double crochets to start. Followed by chain two, so you can turn the corner, coming back into the same space for another three double crochets. So one, two, and three. So what's gonna happen now in the spaces between the corners? You have to chain one first, then jump to the next space. And this happens to be another corner again. So as you get bigger, the corners get further and further away from you and we'll be covering that in the next round to show you what to do. So we're turning the corner, chain two, coming back in the same space so we can turn. Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to chain one first because that's gonna get us to the next space. So the final space we already have one done. So we're only gonna put in two double crochets this time. So one and two and we're gonna slip stitch to the third chain up. So one, two and three like that. And that concludes that round. Okay, so that's what it looks like at this point. So let's move along to the next round. So to start another round, here we're gonna go again. So we're gonna come right into the corner space, the next one, pull through that one and the loop. Now we're gonna start again. So it's chain five, one, two, three, four and five. First three are double crochet, the other two are a chain two space. Coming into the same space, we're gonna double crochet three times. So one, two and three. So now that we, in order to jump to the next space, we always have to chain one first, then come in. So now we have a space before you're gonna get to a corner. So in the spaces, they're always gonna be the same. Just three double crochets sitting into that same space. Followed by chain one, and then you're in a corner again. So the corners are what? Three double crochet, then two chain, then three double crochets, that's right. So what do we need to do to jump to the next space? We have to chain one first, then come into this space. How many is in there? It's three double crochets. So it's a very easy pattern to remember for counts. You just gotta remember the number three. So we have to jump to the next space. So we have to chain one first, then come into a corner. Corners are three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So what is the difference between this round and all of the other rounds that you're gonna do? The difference is that the corners will be more spaced apart from each other, therefore there's gonna be more distance and more spaces in between. So as long as you know how to chain one first before jumping to the next space and then doing three double crochets, then you're good to go. You just have more spaces to work with, that's all. So chain one, next one happens to be a corner corners are always gonna be the same in this particular pattern. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet.
Okay, chain one, come into the next space, three double crochet, and the next corner that we're gonna run into is already partially done from when we started. So we chain one first, coming into the final corner, we're just gonna put in only two double crochets, and then join it to the third chain up. So just insert into the third chain, yarn over, pull through and through. So that concludes that revolution. So let me show you just a starting of one and then I'll show you how to finish off the round uh, in order to when you get to the size that you need. So start the next round, insert into the space, pull through, chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, three double crochets into the same space. So this time there's going to be an additional space between the corners that was added because of the last round. So remember you just gotta chain one to get to the next space. So this time you see that there's two spaces before a corner. So you're just gonna play in those spaces. Followed by chain one, come into the next space for three. Followed by a chain one, then the corner. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna have you continue to go around. You should know exactly what to do by now. And I'm gonna show you how to finish this off so that you have no tails hanging out of your work. So because once you start washing with this, uh, if your tails are not secured in, they are definitely gonna fall out as you're doing your dishes. So go all the way around just like I've shown you and I'll see you back here and I'll show you how to finish, it, finish this off. So I'm coming up all the way back around. I'm gonna come into my very last space that's already partially started from the way that I started. And I'm only gonna put in two double crochets at that point and then just slip stitch to the third chain up. So let me show you how to finish this off. So this is what it looks like at this point. So it says to do nine revolutions. So you see one, two, three, four. So you can see that it would get much bigger. You can stop when you think that this dishcloth is big enough for yourself. I, th I think it's really quite big myself. So, so I'm gonna cut a stra the strand about 12 inches long using my scissors. And I want to grab a darning needle next. So I'm going to take the string and yarn it over and pull through the loop. Like so because I've already cut it it will all come out. And what I want to do is that I wanna feed the yarn, the yarn into the darning needle. And in order for these tails not to fall out you should weave them in three times. So coming back in the direction from which you were crocheting I want you to go back underneath the fibers. Okay right into the fibers itself. In for one turn around, go into a different space from where you came out of and go back in the same direction. So this is two and then turn around one more time, go into a different path and underneath the fibers, don't go on an edge because then you'll see it and three. So now this will never fall out on itself because it's been weaved in three times. So now you can safely cut it right down to the beginning like so because it's underneath the stitch work. The one that was in the middle here because I had you bury it when you went around, you can safely cut that right down and now you have a project of a dishcloth with no um, uh, tails hanging out of it. So this is how you do a very simple granny square dishcloth and I hope you enjoy this pattern and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day we'll see you again real soon.